afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to yet another session of the MITA Lecture Series. Today we have with us Mr. Sonal Dabral, who is the Chairman and Chief Creative Officer at the DTB Mudra Group. Welcome, sir. Lunch and they came back 
with beer and all that. And I was the first speaker after lunch coming on. So I came in and I had these, you guys are like looking absolutely into and smiling, which is great. And giving a lot of this thing. But uh, that, that audience that I saw was like this. <laughs> and looking at me with anger and all that. So I didn't know what to do. I got absolutely zapped. I opened my laptop and ready for the presentation. And there's this audience looking at me like that. Ah, so I said, oh. So I came on in the middle of the stage and I said, uh, let me talk to you about the branding in Bollywood. So they all got Bollywood, the moment they heard some fucked up. So I said, wow, it's working. So I said, uh, should I sing you a song, Bollywood song? So they said, yeah, 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 right. And everybody woke up, right? And I also felt a little better after that. And so happened that because it was an auditorium, the guy who was manning the lights was some extra smart chappy there. Because what he did was he put all the lights off the moment he heard Bollywood song. <laughs> he put all the lights off and there was a spotlight on me. <laughs> so I actually had to then, I mean I was not left with no choice but to sing it. And I sang that and it worked. So every time I do a presentation after lunch, where I was singing it, right? I try to sing. Now I believe this thing will be recorded and put on YouTube. If I go off to you, please edit this part. <laughs> okay, so branding in Bollywood. Now what used to happen was like you had people like I don't know whether you any of you was born when Manoj Kumar was a star, you were not. But Manoj Kumar had a different style, Rajinda Kumar had a different style, Devanand had a different style. And uh, they used to, like Manoj Kumar used to just stand in one position and sing the entire song by just moving his nostrils. <laughs> and uh, the Devanand again used to jump around, but jump around like he's made of elastic. You know? And so they were, they were all, they had only one style which they continued and became hit by that. But later, you know, when uh, new stars came in and all that, they had to do much more, you know, build their bodies and all that. And then came Shah Rukh Khan. So Shah Rukh Khan, what he did, and uh, this is like, I think he said it in one interview also. He combined a few styles, right? Now this story I was making up for Taiwan uh, guys, right? I was kind of making up. Uh, but uh, there is some, some you know, semblance of truth in it. So Shah Rukh Khan, if you see, he's combined all kinds of styles. So I'll sing you three, four lines of one of his songs, which I quite like. And so you have to carefully watch the eyebrows, the fingers, the shoulders, everything. Yeah? <coughs> <coughs> Singapore, yeah, 
and the Lord took me all over the place, shoots and conferences and judging and all that. So there's lots of these in this uh, long journey that I've had lots of experiences, lots of work, different kinds of work that I did, I had the opportunity to do. And of course, each of these, some of these uh, campaigns that you work on, some of these experiences that you have, all these kind of teach you some little lessons, right? And so I thought it might be a good idea to share with you some of the work that I did. And while doing that work, what are the, besides the work, besides kind of honing my craft as an advertising person, what are some of the life lessons that it taught me? So I thought I should share with you and uh, we'll see, I, I think I've got time till uh, quarter to four or no? How much time do I have? Take your time. Yeah, quarter to four or something. So. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll skip and uh, if I'm not able to finish it, then you give me an excuse to come back again to finish it, right? Okay. Some lessons I've learned. So as I said, journey began in Agra. Agra is a small, not a small town. It's a beautiful town, you know. It's got Taj Mahal and uh, this is what uh, they kind of fake Agra has. This is how it's shown to the world that Agra is this. <coughs> Agra is not this, Agra is this. But I'm not complaining, you know. There's all these crowded streets and all that because there's so much of learning that I had in these crowded streets in Agra. Anybody from Agra here? Oh, fantastic. What's your name? Runi. Runi. So in Agra, you know how people talk, I mean, what are you doing? Where are you going? Where are you going? And uh, uh, something bad happens, they say, <laughs> so there's this very, uh, very evocative terminology and beautiful, you know. And bhaiya ram ram, loud bhaiya ram ram is, you know, when you greet somebody. So I, I had a wonderful nine, ten years in Agra and those good formative years. And I think it was in Agra, I think that for the first time, you know, storytelling is becoming so important now. Brands are into storytelling. You know, as an aside, uh, when uh, Apple computers on their website and they tell you about this new MacBook Pro, which is made of one piece of metal, right? What's that? That's storytelling. Yeah? They are creating a myth or a legend around the product. So you are seeing that product in a new light. So storytelling is becoming more and more important for all brands, for everybody. Every time we write a script, it's a story that we are writing, you know? And uh, a story needs to engage people, you know, so that people get absolutely involved in that story. So my first taste of listening to a great storyteller, well, I think happened in Agra. And uh, the story is that uh, every summer or every, every time we had a short break in Agra, we used to go to my mama's place in Firozabad. He was a doctor there. And uh, we used to go to this Agra bus station which was a oh, you can imagine, you know, now, uh, if you, uh, if you, you have seen Agra bus stand? Maybe it's very improved now, but I'm talking of, you know, many, many years back. So I used to be in this crowded bus, uh, every single time that I was going to Firozawan, right? Let me take a sip of water before. Every time that uh, we used to go to uh, Firozabad, so I'm sitting in the bus, crowded bus, everybody bothered, you know, waiting for the bus to start. And every time, just five minutes before the bus used to start, there used to be that, this guy coming in, youngish guy, with a bunch of notebooks in his hand, yeah? And uh, he was obviously a notebook seller. And he used to come in and go onto the side of the bus, कोई कीमत कोई पैसा नहीं बाहर जाएंगे तो इस किताब की कीमत दो रुपया दो रुपया दो रुपया 
लेकिन कंपनी के प्रचार के वास्ते हम ले आए हैं पिछहत्तर पैसा पिछहत्तर पैसा पिछहत्तर पैसा फादर पिता है मदर है माता रिलेशन माने रिश्ता ना
And uh, so we, when we researched it, in that I met this young five, six year old solar boy, and he had this little, you know, those cute solar boys. And I said, Tomara uh, Namke, uh, Harikira Singh, a very thin voice. So I said, Kesala, I don't like this. So I said, Kyo, he couldn't answer that. So I said, Acha, tum chips ka se so I go out and give it to daddy. Daddy gives me money, and I give it to daddy. Daddy gives me money, and I go to the shop, and I tell him, Hey, hey, give me those chips. No, no, give me those chips. Give me those chips. So I thought that emphatic way in which he was asking. I said, sir, there is something there. And you know, sometimes what happens is that, and I'll come to that later, that how you should keep your windows of the mind always open, as people will be going into communications with industry. So sometimes what happens is that, and I'll come to that later, that how you should keep your windows of the mind People will be going into communications industry. Uh, there was a song which was which had become quite a big hit at that time, which was Mithun Chakravarti's very tacky film, right? But the song was quite catchy, which was Juli Juli, Johnny Ka Dil Tujh Pe Aaye Juli. Humko ye nahi maanta, humko wo nahi maanta, humko aur koi whatever nahi maanta, right? So that emphatic view of that little boy and that song somehow kind of combined in my head. And when I got out of that research little house that we were doing the research in and got into the auto to get back to office, in my head that line came, Hanko Bini's Manka. I said, if, if the way for asking for a packet of chips becomes the campaign thought, yeah, there's no rule that you can't do that. Yeah? But there's something about that line. And in hindsight, when I now look back, and it's, it's been written about also, when I look back now, it was, see, every time you do uh, a, a piece of kind of, let's say, any course, breakthrough work, that breakthrough, you say breakthrough because it's in the context of that times, whatever trends are, or, you know. But generally, as I told you, because advertising thinking was very English and lines, so in that, this kind of speak of Hango Bini's Manta was a kind of a fresh one. It was. Youth had just started getting into this fusion language in India. So I think that's what captured people's imagination. And anyway, I'll show you the film. Uh, some of you might have seen it. People who are really old here, but many of you might not have been, most of you might not have been born then. Take a look. Uncle So what it taught me is that in, again, in the in the world that we are in, there is a last minute if you have to change something, change it. If your gut says it needs to be changed, then change it. There will be pressures, pressures of time, pressures of client, pressures of money. But if your gut, if you are absolutely convinced that something needs to be changed, change it till the last minute. You know, I tell my teams that you know, till the artwork is about to get printed. In the newspaper is about to get printed, you can make a call. Stop that! You know, I'm sending a better layout. <laughs> so, there's always a better way than this. Okay. Life's many roles. Now, I'll tell you the story. Real story. I was, I used to do a lot of theater in 
NIB, I've been in Delhi, I was part of this group called Yatri. So I was always interested in theater and films and uh, you know, directing and, and I met this Colonel gentleman called Colonel Kapoor who was casting for this new serial that he was making. Now I was being a young uh, uh, art director, just started my career in Indus, working really hard day in and day out. That notion of taking time off and acting was uh, a bit daunting, you know, whether I'll be able to do it or not. But he said, you know, what, that uh, the couple of main roles are already filled, right? But if you are interested, there's one, one role of one of the four main friends. You'll be one of them. And uh, it's a young series that I'm doing for on young army commandos. So would you be part of that? So I said, you know, this, again, in advertising and in any creative field, as many experiences as you can kind of gather in your head, right? It's always good. So I said yes to that, and uh, that was forging. I think I'm holding it wrong. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> so I debuted with that other boy, you know, who was. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
So when the serial became a hit, I used to go there and he used to give me extra bhavan. So he used to make the juice and loudly say, Aapka serial achha chalna? <laughs> so that other people notice and you know say, wow, you know, this is a star who comes to it. So I was just like free star endorser. Therefore, <laughs> and he was making full use of it. I mean, taking the juice out of it. So he said, Aapka Serial the watch is over after. And then you wait. So I used to go like. <laughs> because the people used to kind of recognize me. Half recognize me, half not recognize me. And then as weeks progressed, yeah, the serial became a big hit. And now people started to recognize me. And some people started talking to me. And Juice Ball again continued to sometimes give me a discount. Sometimes I press a button there. Like that. So all that was going hunky dory and all, and 13 episodes got over, serial got over, and Shahrukh became a big hit. Shahrukh signed on circus, and Shahrukh finally got his first break in film called Dil Ashna Hai. One full page newspaper ad of Shahrukh came in, and that day when I went to the juice wala, he was not looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> so now he is making the juice, and he is making the juice. He's Akhe Churai from me. Now he's not saying you. He's Akhe Sirai from me. 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 He's I am not a struggling actor. So I thought, I stopped going to that juice wall after. <laughs> so anyway, Mumbai Road, I went to Ogilvy uh, Mumbai. And uh, it was 1991 that I joined Ogilvy Mumbai. And Mumbai, again, we were kind of competent agency. We were uh, in Mumbai at that time, Ogilvy was in a very odd place. It was like in terms of billing, like six, number six or seven. And in terms of creativity, some number 10, 11, 12, you know, somewhere there. There were agencies like uh, Low, uh, Mintas, which had electronicity, which was like big and you know sexy and glamorous. And uh, then there were Trakayas and Ambience, which were doing these very beautiful, uh, beautifully art directed, very westernized, but very uh, clever and intelligent work, so to say. And uh, Ogilvy was kind of middle of the road. But then few successes happened, and India at that point in time was also turning. You know, what was happening was in 1991, Manmohan Singh opened the economy as the finance minister, as you all know, right? And uh, for the first time, Indians started to get some kind of confidence. Right? A new generation of Indians started to get confidence. Hindi started to come back into the mainstream. You know, we started becoming proud of who we are, our idioms are, whatever. And uh, uh, at that point in time, Cadbury's Daily Mail wanted to shift as leaders. They were chocolate uh, leaders in the category. And they wanted to shift from talking just to children, because till that time, advertising of chocolates was only to children. So like I tell you, I'll give you an example of the Cadbury's Dairy Mill commercial that was running that time. There's a couple who's coming in a Jeep home, and the beautiful jingle playing, and guitars coming, and Gary Lloyd singing some English songs. And they come home, and the kids are grumpy, and they go here, and they give two candies there, and the kids are happy. Right? Believe me, that was a doubt. Right? However bad it sounds. But those kind of very slightly, I wasn't fully westernized, but the lingo was slightly elitist, westernized, very urban, urban of that time. And in that, uh, this uh, Cadbury's Dairy decided to open the Cadbury's uh, thing, not just the children, but they said we have to do a shift now. We have to open the market and be category leaders. And that was a very daring move to make, which is let's talk to adults now, not just children, let's talk to adults. And uh, the whole insight that we worked on was the fact that everybody likes chocolates. Everybody loves to eat chocolates, but nobody wants to buy it for themselves. They want to buy it for their children because that's what advertising has been showing. So you want to have ch chocolates, but you are not buying it for yourself because, or you are not eating it in public 
because what will people say? Yeah, because it's supposed to feed for children. How can I eat it as an adult? So we associated it with certain things in life that you spontaneously want to do, but you hold yourself back because what will the society say? What will society say? No, what will people say? The societal pressures. And the idea that we came up with was that the real taste of life is when you let yourself go. That's the, that's the asli swazindagi ka. And around that time, these Hindi lines, you know, a few shoulder lines, asli swazindagi ka. And even till then, I mean, now when you see most, most of the time, brands have one single bass line, right? And most of the time it's either in Hindi or English or it's kind of uh, translated in various languages. This was one of the first cases when Hindi came in, but along with that there was still an English line. We had still not broken our shackles, so to say. Uh, so Cadbury's Dairyman that I was talking to you about. And we did two commercials. That was a lots of vignettes and all that. But then the commercial that took sparked off everybody's imagination and kind of changed chocolate advertising and chocolate selling forever was this one. Take a look. Yeah, 
question go away. Fantastic. So he, we stopped that shot and we started taking other shots. By that time, the pigeons were cold. And then the pigeons were sent there. And she comes out running and they refuse to fly. <laughs> Can't keep buying new pigeons, right? <laughs> so Bollywood pigeons are not supposed to fly. So whatever two feet fly that two pigeons took was a direct result of this. <laughs> so that's me showing the pigeons. <laughs> so see the amount of hard work you have to do at the First you come up with an idea, then you have to make that idea happen. I think it's nothing, not a new lesson, but the idea which many brand leaders keep forgetting. That as leaders, you have to lead from the front, even if you have to take some daring, so to say, steps, which Cadbury's did. And Cadbury's took and kind of changed uh, chocolate selling and chocolate advertising forever after that. Next uh, uh, little story that I'll tell you was with this film. Now, uh, you and me, I, Diva, I was like, his, like his, you my boss. And Mentor, our friend, and big brother, whatever. And uh, but I was also in a way his under the part of we were like like a team, you know. So we and our director is like, but we kept writing and our director. You know, lines are blurred in advertising. Everybody does everything. So one morning he walks in and he says, uh, "Tell you we keep film with me, right? You write and I write, and whoever writes first gives the call to the other, right? And we'll see. And we have to present it after lunch. And he went to his cabin. So I'm sitting in my cabin and writing. And I looked at the brief, you know, this timed out brief and all that. And soon enough, in 10 minutes, his call came. Within 10, 15 minutes. So he said, Arya, Arya. So I said, what? So I went to his cabin. He said, hey, army you know, there's a fisherman on fishing. Oh. And he's fishing and one guy comes from some, we can't go army other. And he shoves in a, there's a skewer he's got and he puts in very big there, two, three rock. Also a down comes man, brings out and the full fish, right? <laughs> Fantastic. So I said, okay, I'll make that. I said, it's a joke. So I said, it's a serious product, right? The, the, the night is spending so much money on it, right? And we, the brief that I've got is about this and that and all that. So there are lots of things happening in my mind. So he said, joke hai matlab? Of course joke hai. It's a funny film, right? Tumhe kuch nia So I said, but how, what do you think, uh, uh, the lipstick on the water, that's not how people use it. So I said, wait a minute. So I got a mug of water and I uh, took a coin and put fairy paint on it and I put pencil, uh, sorry, and put it inside the water and brought it out and are still sticking, you know. So I said, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> so let's keep what did I say? I mean, he had not experimented, he had just written the script. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we went to the client, sold the film, right, and uh, this was the film, take a look. Like me, but it's a joke. Yeah? 
Or people will say, the client will never buy it. Or people will say, oh, it costs so much of money. You know, or this is not how it's done, you know. Uh, this is not how they've been advertising, yeah. But maybe precisely for that reason, you should be protecting that idea because that's not how they've been advertising. So they should be advertising it this way, right? Uh, so this is what I learned from that, that ideas are fragile. So when you go out, right, as planners, account managers, and as creative people, in any discipline that you are, listen, listen carefully to if somebody is telling you an idea, listen carefully and see if that idea has got potential. You might reject that idea, but that idea might give birth to something which is really big and large, you know. So this is what I learned from that. And uh, just a little break, there was a, uh, when I came to Bombay, my theatre went for a toss. <coughs> And 3.15. So we went for my theater went for a talk. I mean, are you with me till now? Yes. yes. Okay. So my theater went for a talk, but I still kind of liked, uh, you know, this whole film, the direction and all that. And during that time, I had designed some stuff for, there's a channel called Plus Channel. I designed some graphics for their television programs. And there was this young producer who used to work there. Named, his name was Kunal Kohli. And uh, he, yeah, he was a young producer that time. So, and uh, he, I got a call from him one day. He had left Plus Channel and joined, uh, and had pitched an idea to ZTV. And ZTV had called him to direct what was only India's second music countdown show. There was a music countdown show called uh, Super at Mukabla, which was being done by Javed Jaffrey. And Phillips wanted to come out with another music countdown show. Now the problem was, it was his first directorial break, so it was very important for him. But poor guy had been told by the client that they only want fresh faces as VJs. So he kept auditioning, kept auditioning, and the client kept rejecting all the VJs because they couldn't find anybody the rights for some one reason or the other. So I got a call one day to say, and he said, so now you told me that you've done Fauji, right? So I said, yeah. So that means you're comfortable in front of camera. So I said, yeah, I'm fine in front of Why? What happened? So he said, can you please come and audition for a, uh, as a television host for a music on the program? So I said, host? Oh, so you know? Yes. What kind of program is this? So he said, it's a music on the show. We'll have fun, you know. You can, you can do anything and you write your own scripts and, you know. So I thought this whole idea of you know doing a music countdown show with funny jokes and all that sounds exciting, but will it kind of suit my personality? I'm a serious advertising person. After the show is running on TV, will clients take me seriously? You know. So I worried a bit. So he said, "Okay, at least come and do the auditioning." So I went and did the auditioning, and the client kind of liked what I did, and so he said, "Now you can't do it." So I said, "Okay." <laughs> Very, I did that and uh, I think I was overthinking it because I enjoyed every moment of it. Every time we used to, I used to write my own script and uh, we used to shoot, shoot over the weekends, Saturday and Sunday. Now, uh, after Philip stopped in, I also did a couple of uh, game shows. Now that was, if Philip stopped in was monkeying around, then game shows was monkeying around into 10, right? But it was fun. Now what it did was that I used to present in front of a live audience like this, yeah, in these game shows. I did Anchor Apprent and Sar Dhamaka, there was two game shows. So for six years I was kind of doing this. And I used to be, on weekdays I used to work as a serious advertising professional. And weekends I used to monkey around on the sets, right, recording these shows. Now what I decided, started doing, which was great fun, which was free market research. And I'll tell you how. Whatever scripts that we used to work on over the week, right? And if the client is kind of not buying it, I used to take those scripts during the shoot. And while the camera and lights are being set up, I used to say, you know, just as an example, I'll tell you, there's a, uh, let's say a man fishing, you know, and another man comes and puts heavy quick and puts it at four fish. Do you like it? Yeah, 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 I like it, I like it. So then I has to come back on Monday and tell the client, oh, your script is sold. 
the entire audience of 600 people, everybody loved it. You must make it. You know? So clients used to kind of, kind of buy it. So let me show you a couple of... Don't laugh. Okay, take a look. These are excerpts from my clothes. <laughs> 